All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity. And with charity, I am the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago, coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, Lord willing to be edifying. And in this video, I uh, want to talk about this recent um, event that happened um, a couple days ago in which uh, an Edomite, a Edomite man, uh, which today the Edomites of the so-called white people, all right, choked and killed, murdered, right, not killed, murdered a homeless man, a Jake, all right, an Israelite who was homeless, uh, who was weakened, and this Edomite literally just choked him and murdered him. Okay, uh, and this goes deeper than just some random guy choking out another random guy on the train. Okay, this happened, okay, because there is an enmity between these two people. And it goes uh, all the way back um, to the time of Cain and Abel, right? Um, the serpent and the woman. And... You know, this is all spiritual. Okay, this is all spiritual. And it goes back f to the beginning, right? Like I mentioned, the, uh, the serpent and the woman, Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, okay, up until this very day, all right? Um, there, There's always been a perpetual hatred. A perpetual enmity between these two nations okay um, right now we're under the rule of our enemies okay starting with Esau Edom okay and you know we we'll go ahead and start off with uh, Ezekiel 35 Okay, this is Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 1. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. All right. Now, Mount Seir, all right, uh, I'll let you know in Genesis uh, 35, I believe, who Mount Seir is. Esau is Edom. Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Okay. So now today we prophesy against the people because the people, all right, uh, the nation is a people before it's a place, all right? The real Israelites as a whole are not in the land of Israel, all right? Bastards dwell in the land of Israel. Frauds dwell in the land of Israel, okay? So right now we prophesy to the people, all right? Which is everywhere, all across the world, you have camps prophesying against uh, the so-called white man, which are the biblical Edomites. It says, And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Okay, so perpetual meaning everlasting and everlasting hatred towards the children of Israel. And in the time of our calamity, in the time that our iniquity had an end, you still forwarded the affliction okay it says therefore as i had lived saith the lord god i will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee sith thou has not hated blood even blood shall pursue thee and what's the saying in the world and it's even in the scriptures as well that's where they get it from if you live by the sword you die by the sword okay 
And that was your blessing. That is what you live by. And that is um, going to be your own downfall, your own ruin. All right? It's your own sword. Okay? Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 4 and 8. It says, And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and his brother and slew him. Alright, now let's go to this word. Cain. Alright, um, so the root word, it means a spear. Alright, which is a weapon. Cain, Esau, is a weapon. What was his? What was Esau's blessing? The sword. What does Esau live by? The sword. How did he take over the world? The sword. All right. Who did that? Who fits the description in the world today? All right. Least common denominator: the so-called white man. Okay. And that is why this happened, all right? And this is just one example. This is just one example, all right? And then another example that came comes up is uh, Derek Chauvin. I believe that's his name. Uh, I believe that's the cop that killed, um, uh, what's his name? Something Floyd. Something Floyd, when all the protests um, happened a couple years ago in all the major cities in the U.S. Okay, the time of, of, of slavery of not only uh, the so-called Negroes, but Latinos and Native Americans as well. Okay, because this is the land here in America where we were oppressed together. Okay. When uh, Cristobal Colon's bitch ass came over here on this side of the world and he knew where he was going. Okay. Um, came and then brought all the conquistadors with him and put us in slavery. Almost made us extinct with all their disease. Okay. Um... What they do, they brought back slaves to their land, uh, to Spain, Portugal, France. All right, and then when there was damn near nothing left here, they brought the southern kingdom over here. Okay, then you had the transatlantic slave trade. All right. And we, we're, we're still... In our captivity under this devil. Okay. Nothing has changed yet. Alright. Just because the physical yokes of iron. The physical chains. Have come off. Doesn't mean we're not in slavery. Uh, Alright. Now it's more of a slavery through the mind. Through. Um, contract. Through signature. Okay. And they still. Uh. Benefit off the fruits of slavery to this day. Alright. But this. Is just something that. Uh, will continue on until the Lord comes back and delivers us. Okay. This is. Um, Exodus 17. And verse 16. It says. For he has said. Because the Lord has sworn. That the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Who is Amalek? Amalek uh, is of the nation of Edom. Okay. Of the nation of Edom. 
And when you go to Psalms, the 83rd chapter, it lets you know that the Lord has enemies. Psalms 83 and 2, For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and have consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, they have con they are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Hagarines, Gebal, and Ammon, and Amalek. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Right? So the Lord has enemies. And these enemies have always taken crafty counsel against us, the Israelites. Because they have enmity uh, for us. Perpetual hatred against us. Alright? And then you go to the time of, of Haman. Okay, Haman. After these things, the king Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. Right, or Ag the Agagite, which Agag, in the book of Samuel, you'll find that he is the king of the Amalekites. Right? So Haman, bitch has Haman, was an Edomite, right? It says, and advanced him to set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did reverence, nor did him reverence. And the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai, Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought, Scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And this is something they've always tried to do, and you know, will never stop because Ezekiel 35, right? The, a perpetual hatred. All right, since the time of Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, and all the accounts that you read in the scriptures and all the evidence that we see in the world today, in the history of our, our nation and their nation, all right, there's always been conflicts. There's always been contentions, and there always will be. All right, these are the two main characters in the scriptures, okay? Okay. Let's go to uh, Genesis 25. When uh, Jacob and Esau were, were uh, in the womb, it says Genesis 25 and 23, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. All right? So the children were wrestling in the womb. All right, since the womb. Right, and the Spanish says they were wrestling inside the womb. Rebecca was like, why is this happening? Right? And the Lord gave the breakdown. Two nations are in the womb, two men are people shall be separated from thy bowels, 
and one people shall be stronger than the other. Who's the nation that's stronger than the other? One nation is mightier than the other when you compare the two. It's no secret who's dominating the NBA, who's dominating sports, who's dominating boxing, who's dominating the UFC, who's dominating uh, all these combat sports, right? All these athletic sports, who's dominating them? Jake is. Right, the elder shall serve the younger. Who came out first? Esau did. All right, and that was all symbolic as well, because uh, in Second Ezra six and nine, it says that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. That followed. Okay. And then even Esau sought to slay Jacob, right? Because Esau planted him. Uh, for his birthright, but that was all set up through the spirit already. Okay. So this thing, man, goes way back, and this, what this, when when this happened, all right, it's all spiritual because it goes back all the way. Uh, to Jacob and Esau, to Cain and Abel, all right. It goes way back. This is uh, Obadiah 1 and 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. All right, and that's, um, you know, Esau's destiny to be cut off from ever. Right, when you read down to verse 18. It says, "In the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken him." And that's his destiny, All right? That's the prophecy of Esau, Edom, of great future judgments, All right? The only nation that has not promised any mercy from the Most High. Okay, so the Lord ain't going to let Esau get away with murder. Okay, Esau, well, the Lord will not at all acquit the wicked. Okay, and that's, that's what gives us comfort. Although this happened, all right, the righteous judge will come and judge righteously. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Lord willing, this video was edifying. As always, our honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone. Until the next time, Shalom.